This week I worked on a visual redesign of Less Annoying CRM, a CRM app for individuals and small businesses that currently makes more than $3 million per year. The founder, Tyler King, reached out and asked for help to make the product feel more modern and approachable. But there was a catch. Tyler told me people love Less Annoying CRM, they love how it works and how it's laid out, so don't move anything. No new features, no removing features, no major layout changes, just make it look better. So with this constraint in mind, let's dig in. This is the less annoying CRM dashboard. When you sign in, we've pre-populated it with a bunch of fake dummy data. And the main thing that I focused on on this dashboard screen was actually the activity report. It's sort of like a global history of all the events taking place in your CRM. I'll revisit that here in a minute. The other key screen that we looked at was the contacts list, uh, a way to search through all of your contacts and send off a quick email or look up a quick phone number. We also looked at the contact detail page, which is of course where you keep all of the information about any given contact and you can attach lots of things like an event or a task, assign them to a group or upload a file. You also have lots of contact info like emails and addresses and phone numbers. And each contact detail page also has a full history showing all of the changes and events that your team or you individually have taken with a particular contact. The other thing that we looked at was the search interface, specifically thinking about the dialog style. In fact, if we go back to the contacts list and create a new contact, you'll notice there's just some inconsistencies with the dialog style across Less Annoying CRM. For example, the title here is big and bold and blue, but it's not interactive like other blue text elements. We also have just this blue background color for not only the dialog title, but also for the footer, for sections, for pills, for form inputs. So the, the use of color here actually makes it hard to convey what type of element does what thing on this page. Okay, so that's a quick abbreviated walkthrough and reminder, the goal of this is to not move anything. All right, so we're in Figma now, and I'm gonna click through and show you some before and after. We actually went through two iterations, so I'll show you the first iteration and then point out some of the mistakes in that iteration and then jump you to the final product. So here is the contacts list, and I'll show you what happened next. This is where I landed. You'll notice right away, if I just toggle back and forth between these things, that the new design feels very white and minimal. This is kind of my style. I like things that look like this. The problem is, as Tyler correctly pointed out, this looks pretty boring. In fact, this actually looks like an enterprise CRM, which is the kind of thing we were trying to avoid in the first place. Whereas here, yeah, it's maybe not quite as tightened up, but it still feels approachable and it feels different than something that you might encounter in a big organization. So that was the first problem. And I think that problem really is because I did a few things. One, I sharpened up the corner radius. I dropped the text size across the board. I did things like remove the blue text for the name of a contact and made it black. So we actually lost a lot of color on this page. And just the subtle cues, the subtle switches between the grays and the washes and the foreground and the background just made it a little bit harder to understand what was happening on this screen. One important thing to know is that Tyler's customers prefer a little bit larger text. They prefer a little bit higher contrast. And so that will make its way in in the next iteration. But let's push forward. So this is the contact detail page. And one thing that you might notice if you stare at the screen for a while is that there's a little bit of a weird hierarchy going on, specifically over here with the page actions column and the way it interacts and connects to the global navigation. Because over here we have contacts exposing some actions, but these actions are actually for this contact. So they feel pretty disconnected. In fact, these feel more like navigation than they do like editing or assigning or merging. So that was the first thing that I wanted to work on. The second thing is you can see a little bit too much letter spacing here. We have some mixed metaphors with a green button to save, but a green button also to open a drop down. There's also a lack of key lines. There's just a lot of zigzagging as you read down this page, going through and trying to find some piece of information. Your eyes are constantly wiggling back and forth. So the change I made looks like this. And this is where I broke the rules. I wanted this contact header to take up the full width of the page. And I felt like this was a little bit more clear. Here is the contact and below that contact are actions to take on that contact. But we're not allowed to move things. 
People are used to the way this works. They're used to the way things are positioned. And so we had to walk that back in the next iteration. I'll show you that here in a second. The other thing, of course, you can see here is it still feels sharp, smaller text. And in fact, uh, while I think I was successful at defining key lines on this screen, especially when we get into some of these sections like customer issues and groups and sales leads, what I lost was the affordance of what is interactive or not. What are the click targets of these things versus just dead space? So previously you can see that this box for a lead or this pill for a group were clearly interactive elements. But in my design, I just flipped those down to text. Now, there, of course, there'd be some sort of hover interaction, but having to hover over everything to know what's clickable or not is bad design. So a lot of mistakes here. I was also just missing a bunch of metadata, like I was missing all of the context for what happened with each history entry. Here's the ad contact dialogue. So here's where I landed. This hopefully feels clear, but again, I think it suffers from a lot of the same problems that the other screens have, which is feels a little bit too small, feels a little bit hard to read. And we also lost a few signifiers like a form input looking like a dropdown might not be the best decision. Making these add another links gray instead of blue might confuse what's interactive or disabled. So there's just some mistakes here, but it was a step in the right direction. Another thing that I wanted to, to figure out was if we could design a dialogue system that would work for different kinds of dialogue. So obviously this one is very large and complex, but there are other dialogue types like delete confirmations that should feel lighter weight, but should also fit within this dialogue system so that they, the team doesn't have to go through and rebuild every dialogue as one-offs. So here's an example of how that could work. Here's a smaller delete confirmation dialogue using the same header, same footer, button placement, but it works for smaller content. So we arrived here at this first checkpoint and all of these problems started to surface. It just feels too small. It feels a little bit too boring. It feels a little bit too enterprise. So how do we fix that? Well, I think there's a few things you can play with that are very subtle, but actually make an interface feel a lot more friendly, a lot more approachable. So things like corner radius, things like drop shadows, the use of color and the size of typography on the page. So I'm gonna quickly flip to the next milestone, which was the final handed off version of this page. And we'll just be able to see before and after. So here's the after, before and after. And if I do that quickly, you'll notice it actually just kind of feels like I'm zooming in a tiny bit. Like the structure of the page is the same. It just feels like I hit command plus, right? Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. And that's a good thing. It means the page is still recognizable. But hopefully, when you see this page, it feels a little bit more approachable. We've rounded the corners. We've softened the drop shadows. Across the board, the size of text came up one point. We increased a little bit of contrast as well, so that the secondary text, the tertiary text is all a little bit darker. We also played around with adding these two-tone colored icons for the global navigation. And I think that helps, uh, one, it adds a splash of color to the page, and it lets you associate color with location, which is kind of a cool thing that you could play with in the future. But it also separates this list of, you know, icon plus text, icon plus text from this set of icon plus text, icon plus text, where here we have the monochrome, here we have the color. So these are clearly different things. Here is the first check-in of the contact detail page. And here's where we landed next. If I toggle those back and forth, this page has quite a few differences, but hopefully, this second page feels a lot more friendly and a lot easier to read. So you'll notice right away that these attachments, tasks and notes and sales leads and customer issues, they all have very clear boundaries. It's clear what is an interactive element or not. I also spent quite a lot of time thinking about key lines to make this page feel a little bit more scannable, even adding in splashes of color and building a color system around this idea of attachments. You have notes and tasks and leads and issues. And then when you jump down to the history section, you can see those same elements being reused so that it's easy to scan and know what is changing on this contact over time. Here is the previous version of the create contact dialog. Here's the after, before, the after. You'll notice a few key changes here. I made the inputs feel a little bit softer, added borders so that there's just a little bit more contrast between an input and the page. I also switched it right in the previous version. I had inputs and drop downs have the same fill color, but that is actually a little bit confusing because these work in different ways. So I've made the drop down have a white background and it actually pops off the page a little bit with a subtle drop shadow, whereas inputs have a little bit of a subtle inset drop shadow. So it feels pushed in to the page. 
Now, people can click on these attachments and add attachments in line. The way it works in the current version of Less Annoying CRM is you would click an attachment type and it would create a section above this button area and let you add that attachment. This is how that looks in the new version. So if I added a note and then I added a customer issue, they would appear here as sections. And what's really cool is we get to borrow a lot of the same design language with this sort of attachment icon and then this style of text with this left key line showing here is a note, here is a customer issue. Moving on, this is the old search interface. I tried to clean it up, make it feel a little bit more like a command palette that fits and floats on top of the screen. I made some changes like making this little tool tip helper, you know, explaining how to get quick access to search, make it feel a little bit more like an info prompt. I also changed up the way that recent contacts were surfaced. So here we have a lot of truncation in this pill style, but it actually might be helpful to see a full row for a recent search to see the name of the contact as well as their role. I also poked at this idea of when you're searching there, you could search across not only contacts, but attachments on contacts. So being able to show, you know, this is a result that is Tyler, a contact, but here's a result that is Tyler from an attachment, which is a note. Now, the last thing I worked on was the activity report on the workspace section, which is a mixed list of activity on all contacts in your CRM. And what was really cool was that I was able to use the same attachment system that you saw on the contact detail page and just add a little bit of information so that we can reuse the same components, but it's clear in a mix list. So here's where I landed. This is the activity report using very familiar visual cues. I can see the attachment type with a color and icon. I can see who took action on a thing. And then this bottom half of this box, this is just the attachment that you saw on a contact detail page. But in this mixed list, it's important to see who the contact was. So here I can see a bunch of actions on Tyler, but then here on Henry and then on Jane, and then on Jane. And then here's an example of how all of this system works when you even have things like a rolled up event in your activity history. And that's it. This was my walkthrough of the visual redesign for Less Annoying CRM. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know what you thought. Please leave a comment below. I love reading comments. And also I could use advice on how to make these videos better in the future. What was good? What was bad? How could this be more entertaining or educational? Let me know, leave a comment. Otherwise, if you wanna see more of this, be sure to subscribe. And you can follow me on Twitter to see some side-by-sides of the high resolution before and after screenshots. That's it, catch you next time.